Hi everyone. It's Wednesday. It's May 22nd, 2019. I came on here. I was reading some devotionals and I came across a couple that were so beautiful and I miss you all so very much uh, that I just want to come on here and read you a devotional and say hello and tell you how much I missed all of my regular subscribers. Before I read the devotional, I would just like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything. I love you so very much. Father, I ask you to bless all those who watch this video. Father, thank you. This is called A Heavenly Address. And the reading is from John 14, 2. And it says, I am going there to prepare a place for you. I live in a place high on a mountain in a log cabin in North Carolina. I may travel all over the world, but I know that when I come home, I will return to a precise location. It will still be there at the end of my journey. And I always look forward to coming home. In saying that, he was going to pre prepare a place for us. Jesus was telling us that when we die, we are going to a precise location. We do not evaporate or disappear. In fact, he said, quotes, in my father's house, there are many mansions. You could read about it in John 14, 2. We are going to have a place in heaven if we have trusted Christ as our savior. And not only a place, but a mansion. Imagine that. When we as Christians die, we go straight into the presence of Christ, straight into that place, straight to that mansion in heaven to spend eternity with God. We are simply changing our address. Some hope for today says, have you ever shown up early or unexpected to someone's house? It's awkward, right? On the other hand, when someone greets you at the door and has the guest room ready, it feels remarkable, doesn't it? When you arrive in heaven, all the heavenly hosts will be expecting you. Yeah, it's, a, it's an acceptance and a reception that we have never experienced on this earth. We look forward to that. And this one is called From Time to eternity and the reading is from Colossians 1 verses 3 and 5 and it says we give thanks to God because of hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Once I stood in London to watch Queen Elizabeth return from an overseas trip. I saw the parade of dignitaries, the marching bands, the crack troops, the waving flags. I saw all the splendor that accompanies the homecoming of a queen. However, that was nothing compared to the homecoming of a true believer. At that moment of death, the believer enters heaven itself, carried upward by the angels to the glorious welcome awaiting the redeemed. You can read about that in Luke 16:22. From our human viewpoint, death is always tinged with sadness. 
It is not wrong to mourn the loss of a loved one. Jesus wept at the grave of his friend Lazarus. You can read about that in John 11:35. But the Christian should never consider the death of a fellow believer as a tragedy. Paul said we should not, quote, grieve like the rest of men who have no hope, unquote, which is spoken of in 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Yes, we have hope. The way to heaven may lie through the valley of the shadow of death, but the angels accompany us all the way, and beyond is heaven, our glorious home. And some hope on this one is when a loved one who is a believer passes away, it makes us loosen our grip on earth and long for heaven a little more. It's not a goodbye, but a see you there. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? And, you know, for each one, the death of a loved one is different. It depends on the, how close we were in our journey in this lifetime. Many people have, um, uh, you know, very strong connections, and there's a, a heavenly purpose. Um, I often said when, you know, people started passing away in my family as I got older. Um, I started to feel like a Swiss cheese, you know, holes, empty holes. Thank, thank God that he filled in those holes for me. Um, I always said that uh, the love that you give a person, they take it, they take it with them when they go. Those are those holes. And uh, that's why you feel empty when they pass away. But our Lord is so uh, loving and so tender and so merciful toward us. Um, he understands perfectly well um, the grief and the mourning that we feel that uh, when we are in Christ we lean on him to heal our wounds and um, he will seal up those vacancies in us. He will fill it with himself and the hope that we will see them again when we will return home. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading this to you. Um, it's not a reigniting of my ministry. I just wanted to come on here and, um, and give you a little bit of hope and encouragement that um, there is something far, far greater than what we have been born into here in this world. And um, to our minds, what is waiting for us is unimaginable. We can't even begin to uh, imagine what it might be like, but we do believe our Heavenly Father when he tells us there's something magnificent waiting for us. And uh, something magnificent that is given to us by the Creator Himself can only be as glorious as He is. And if He gives us something that's as glorious as He, he is, He gives us His glory when we get our resurrected bodies. You can just count on the fact that everything else that He has planned for us is just as glorious. So, um, I want to tell you that I love you and remind you that Jesus loves you. Never forget how much Jesus loves you. Never forget it, people. We are so close to going home. So close. Don't lose hope. I love you. God bless.